Hello everyone, this is Demetrius Wilson and this is Marketing. We are now on Chapter 1. We'll have a, a PowerPoint lecture for each of the chapters throughout the course. We start off with uh, what is marketing? Nothing better to start off with than what is the topic that we're referring to. Questions, uh, what is marketing? Who does marketing and why study marketing? So what is marketing? It's not just advertising, it's not just selling, uh, it's not just promotion. It's a lot of things combined. Uh, who does marketing? Uh, almost everybody does marketing. Uh, you know, your school does marketing, your company does marketing, you do marketing of yourself. Uh, and why study marketing? Because it is definitely a lucrative business uh, if, you're, you're, if you're good at it. Uh, you know, it might be something that just interests you, might be your passion. Uh, and might just be a prerequisite course that you have to take, uh, but there are many, many reasons to study marketing. A learning objective, uh, <clears throat> define marketing and outline its components. So whenever you go into a chapter, a course, anything, you need to uh, learn what the, or not learn, but know what the objectives are and then go about trying to achieve those objectives. So whether it be you looking at the syllabus and figure, figuring out what the student learning objectives are, or the learning objective for the uh, for the chapter. Uh, so, what is marketing? The activity of a set of institutions and processes for creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging. And those four words would be very important. Offerings that have value for customers, clients, and society at large. Creating, right? So, if we're doing laptops, I created a laptop. Now, I want to communicate. I want to advertise about the laptop with a commercial out there. I want to deliver. I want to go through my logistics of sending you the laptop and exchanging. I want to exchange money. I give you the laptop. You give me uh, $1,500, right? So, uh, you know, very broad definition of it, but we're going to study those four components that kind of uh, replace uh, price, product, place, and promotion uh, as defined by the American Marketing Association. So these are the components of marketing. So there are four activities or components of marketing, and we just mentioned them. Creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging. And I'm glad they put this slide up to show that, that how they relate to the traditional four, which is product, promotion, place, and price, right? So I create a product. So if you see the correlation, create a product. If I communicate, right, promotion, promotion of the product. Deliver, right? I have to deliver it to a place, my logistics to your house, right? Exchanging, exchange is a price because you're going to give me the amount of money that it costs for the laptop. Uh, so a mathematical definition of value. So you didn't think we were doing any math in marketing class, but we are. Uh, so value equals benefits received. What do you receive minus price and hassle? So if you do something like a cost benefit analysis that you've seen in other classes, uh, if your benefits do not outweigh the price and the hassle, then you should not purchase whatever it is that you're thinking about purchasing. But if my benefits do outweigh the price and the hassle and I weigh them by a considerable amount, then I should make that purchase. Uh, value is ultimately determined by the customer. And that's one of the big things that we're going to key in on in this chapter is value. It's determined by a customer. How valuable is it to me? Now, you can give me a thousand laptops, but if I hate computers and never want to touch one, then those laptops are worth zero dollars to me. There is no value. Uh, when we use the term value, <clears throat> we mean the benefits buyers receive uh, that meet their needs. Now, remember, I don't like laptops. I don't like computers. So it's not serving me any benefit. It doesn't meet any of my needs. But if it does, then that's where the perceived or the actual value is. Because remember, perception is reality. Uh, in other words, value is what the customer gets from purchasing and consuming a company's offering. Uh, when I say consuming, I'm not saying that you're going to eat the computer. I'm just saying that you're going to get the computer and you're going to use it. Uh, hassle is a time and effort the consumer puts into the shopping process, right? So if I'm buying a car, how much, how many different, you know, car lots do I have to go to? Do I go to Cerritos Auto Square and Tustin Auto Square and then way out in the boonies and Hesperia Auto Square? Some, you know, like how much hassle is it? Uh, so that's, that's the hassle, time, effort, all of, all of those things involved. The marketing concept is a philosophy of creating value. Every employee in the company is focused on serving the customer at a profit, right? So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your company makes a profit, but you also want to serve the customer and make sure that they get what they want out of it. You want to make sure that they feel that what I purchase serves some value in my life. So these are different eras of marketing. Uh, so production orientation, companies believe that the best way to compete was by reducing production costs. So if we make tables, 
if it costs us $100, now it costs us $80, then, then that's what we should do. We want a lower cost. Uh, selling orientation. Companies believe that it's necessary to push their products by heavily emphasizing advertising and selling. Sell, 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 right? It was, it was that, that was the selling error. Uh, production, uh, product orientation. Companies believe that the way to compete was to focus on product innovation. If the, if we make it, they will come, right? So if I make this great product, it doesn't matter if I advertise or do any of that, not, not to that extent, but, uh, but people will come, they'll purchase it, they'll buy it. Uh, the value area is time when companies emphasize uh, creating value for customers, and we're you know we're, we're there now uh, where you know customers they want to feel that 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 value. One to one error. Now we're having a one to one transaction. Uh, time when uh, the way to compete is to build a relationship with the customers, right? It's a relationship buy. You like me, and that's why you're going to purchase something from me. Not necessarily because uh, you like my product so much better than the other company. Sometimes it's it's about the person. And then service dominant logic approach uh, to business that recognizes the consumers want value no matter how it is delivered, whether it's via product, a service, or a combination of the two. So, for instance, uh, my mom, when she got these nice new white carpets, uh, uh, they sold her, um, a different company sold her uh, this vacuum, you know, very high priced vacuum. Uh, <clears throat> so, but then they would come, they would clean the carpets, right? And so that's the service. Now the tangible, which is intangible, now because you it, the carpet's clean, but you can't touch the cleaning of the carpet. Uh, now the tangible good that they sold was the actual vacuum because they gave the vacuum so that I would be put to task and have to vacuum uh, the nice white carpet. So right, and they even gave like a little rake where you rake it, just like if you rake a lawn to even the carpet out. So uh, you know she went all in on on that one. Uh, create offerings that have value. So you have an intangible service, just like I talked about. Uh, so that's cleaning the carpet. Tangible good is the vacuum and the rake. And then the price is how much it costs for that bundle, the service, the product, and everything included all together. <clears throat> so communicating offerings. Many forms of communication may be used. You have news media, you have product placement in movies and on TV. Like say, you know, there's a special consumer report about uh, the laptop that I'm creating, right? That's that's great. That's communicating to everybody. Uh, and then you have product placement in movies and on TV. So, uh, you know, some of you guys know uh, from the class, I always make fun of the fact that I have an electric car. I have a Leaf. And uh, it's so funny that uh, the show Grandfather uh, with John Stamos, I saw that that uh, his, uh, his son's mother, uh, she's driving a Leaf. And then another show that I watched called Togetherness, the guy, he's driving a Leaf. So it's funny that you see that product placement uh, on TV. And a lot of times these companies just give them the product so that they, they can get out there and people can actually see it. Uh, describing the offering and its value to the user, right? So you want to make sure that, you know, I want to know what the value is to me, not what the value is to somebody else. What value is it for me to make this purchase? If you make it make sense to me, <clears throat> then I'm going to buy it. Uh, communicating offering. So communicating means describing the offering and its value to your potential and current customers, right? So you have potential customers and you have current customers, but you have to utilize those current customers appropriately because you want to say, hey, current customers, what are we doing right? We want to do more of right. What are we doing wrong? We need to do less of wrong. And then we communicate that to our potential customers. And now they're getting a better product and or service as well as learning from customers what it is they want and like, because that probably dictates and probably holds true for what other people want and like as well. It also means that customers get a chance to tell the company uh, what they think. And feedback is great. Feedback is good. We live in the feedback uh, generation. Yelp, Twitter, Facebook, everything else. Don't make a wrong move or somebody's going to destroy you on social media. Uh, companies use many forms of communication, including advertising on the web or television, billboards and magazines, uh, throughout product placements in movies and through salespeople. Uh, most interesting is like the uh, the electronic uh, billboards, right? So your billboard is not just up there the whole time saying, hey, you can only uh, pay for, you know, uh, one fourteenth of it. That's cool because we're going to put you up there with 13 other, uh, you know, clients and it's just going to run through. So at least you'll be up there. You won't be up there all day, but you know, you'll be there a 14th of the day. Uh, so delivering offering, so delivering an offering uh, that has value is much more than simply getting the product in the hands of the users, right? You have to get it in the hands of the users and say, hey, this is how you use it to the best of its ability. Use it up, right? That's what we want you to do. Uh, to also making sure that the user understands how to get the most out of the product and is taken care of uh, if he or she requires service later. Uh, value is delivered in part of the company's supply chain. Supply chain includes a number of organizations and functions that mine make a symbol or deliver material so this goes you know from the beginning to the end uh as they say from the cradle to the grave uh and the products from a manufacturer to the consumer right so 
it's created then it gets to the consumer which is the end user uh, as we'll talk about a little bit later you have your b2c uh, which is business consumer i sell it to consumers to that's the end user or b2b i sell it to a business and they probably resell it or use it to put together in a component for something i sell a bunch of laptops they put the laptop uh together with the um with a projector and then they sell it as a bundle uh, logistics or the actual transportation and storage of materials and products as a primary component of supply chain uh, management back in the day i used to work in a, in a warehouse uh, you know lift with your legs now with your back type of warehouse and uh, the logistics uh, was very very important uh, they would come in on the trucks which obviously came from the port so lands at the port comes from you know from the port trucks go there we take it we put it on a, a pallet we shrink wrap it we put on the forklift we put it up there it holds and it stays right there until it's needed to go to uh, the actual retailer who's going to end up selling it. Exchange offer, offerings now typically most of the time it's going to be for cash. Most of the time it's going to be for credit card. Maybe you know you could go back to like how it is in, in other civilizations where we're just going to use the barter system, right? I'm going to give you ten cantaloupes and you're going to give me back three shirts, right? I I have a farm. I'm, I raise cantaloupes and you know you uh, <clears throat> you know have you know, access to, to make shirts a lot quicker and you have sewing skills. So you have a bunch of those shirts, I have a bunch of cantaloupes, then we make a, an exchange there. But typically, in the United States, it's going to be mostly for uh, for cash or credit cards. Uh, exchanging offering. So the act of transaction transacting value between a buyer and a seller is known as exchanging. Uh, when consumers acquire, consume. So acquire, you get it. You consume, you use it and dispose of you get rid of it of products and services exchange actually occurs including and during the consumption phase and like i said you're not eating the laptop you're just using it so key takeaways right so if you look in your book you have key takeaways but same thing here uh, the focus has changed from the four p's to value product is now about creating value price is now about exchanging value place is about delivering value and promotion is about communicating value what's the key word in all four of those uh, or five of those sentences uh, it's it's value value is what's most important uh, and we have to create value for uh, for that consumer or for that business a learning objective for the second section uh, describe how the various institutions and entities that engage in marketing use marketing to deliver value like I said, who does marketing? Like we all do marketing. Everyone does some form of marketing. Here we will focus on organizations. So for profit companies like Walmart, right, they operate at a profit. Our Their business is to make money. Uh, Procter & Gamble, anytime you see that P&G, they're talking about Procter & Gamble. Now me, I went to school at Xavier in Cincinnati, Ohio, so I know Procter & Gamble real well because that's where that's where they are. That's the big thing. Most people I work, who I went to school with, a lot of those people went to and still do work at Procter & Gamble and local businesses. Nonprofits are like charities, schools, hospital, governments. And now just because they're nonprofits or not for profits doesn't necessarily mean that they're not making money. Trust me, Red Cross is making a large amount of money. Uh, for profit companies. So for profit companies like McDonald's, Procter and Gamble, the makers of uh, like Tide uh, detergent and Crest toothpaste. And I should have said they make all these things like Johnson and Johnson products, but you don't know who Procter and Gamble is. So they make them and then, you know, then they sell them for you know for resale right you don't just go purchase stuff from procter and gamble right they sell it to somewhere else and then they, then they sell it from there uh, and walmart do their marketing so for-profit companies can be defined uh, by the nature of their customers and these are the nature of their customers like i said b2c or b2b uh, so a b2c company sells products to be used by consumers uh like you while a B2B or business to business company sells products to be used within another company's operations as well as by government agencies and entities. Right. So I can sell to consumers. I can sell to businesses. I can sell to both. I can sell to one or the other. Uh, other ways to categorize companies that engage in marketing is by the functions they fulfill. So Procter & Gamble is a manufacturer. We create those goods. Walmart is a retailer because they sell those goods. And grocery supply chain is a wholesaler of grocery items because it, it buys from the companies like Procter & Gamble, but then they sell them to small convenience store chains, right? So we say, okay, we'll buy from you, Procter & Gamble, buy a whole bunch of this tie, but now we're going to sell it to these little small mom and pop uh, grocery stores. A uh, nonprofit organizations, not a big you know, change, except for the fact that they're not operating and the goal is not profit, uh, but doesn't mean that they don't want to make profit. 
Nonprofit organizations also engage in marketing. When a nonprofit organization engages in marketing activities, this is called nonprofit marketing. You don't really have to label it like that. Still, it's just marketing, but for a nonprofit company. Uh, government entities also engage in marketing activities. Uh, you know, you see those all the time. Uh, you'll see like uh, you know commercials out to recruit people to to enlist in the Army, Navy, uh, Air Force, Marines. Uh, so you see those, right? So they 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 do that as well. Uh, marketing conducted in an effort to achieve certain social objectives can be done by government agencies, nonprofit institutions, religious organizations, and others. Uh, that's called uh, social uh, marketing. You guys see a lot of social marketing out there these days. Uh, so, marketing you, completing this course will help you to more effectively create value, create value in you, uh, communicate and deliver uh, that value to the receiver. Who's the receiver? Well, it's probably somebody interviewing you. Uh, receive something in exchange and what would you may you would may you possibly see receive in exchange you may receive a job in exchange for the value that you present to somebody who's interviewing you uh, key takeaways marketing can be thought of of a set of business practices that uh, for-profit organizations nonprofit organizations government entities and individuals that you uh, can utilize remember market yourself to the utmost of your ability uh, when a nonprofit organization engages in marketing activities this is called nonprofit marketing uh, you know not a very uh you know it's an easy definition but it's just just saying hey you know it's, it's marketing for nonprofit companies uh marketing conducted in effort to achieve certain social objectives is called social marketing so learning objective for the next section so explain the role of mark that marketing plays in individuals firms and society as a whole so the impact of impact of marketing on society, it enables profitable transactions to occur, right? Profitable for uh, the individual receiving whatever the good or service is because they need it and profitable for the company because they're making profits uh, as they intended to. Uh, delivers value, right? Uh, benefits society and it costs money and offers people uh, career opportunities, right? So uh, a lot of people want to get a job in marketing because it is a very... Uh, you know, very, very good profession to be in. And uh, a lot of people uh, definitely covet those positions. Opportunities available in marketing. So you have marketing research. So you could just be the person doing the research, find out about consumer behavior, uh, merchandising, uh, sales, average, you might just be the salesperson, not just be, but you might be the salesperson. Advertising, you might look at, you know, how do we advertise this product? Product development, you may be the person creating the product. Direct marketing, right? So you may uh, be involved in direct marketing, like when companies, uh, you know, open up, they get this packet and it's from all these different things that new companies need. So maybe like that type of direct marketing, uh, direct mailers that come out or door to door. Somebody knocks on your door and says, hey, you know, I'd like to sell you this. Uh, digital media, right? You're all over the computer. Uh, event marketing, right? Might just be some type of event that they created, uh, you know, for that, that industry. And then a nonprofit marketing, as we discussed before. So, what are the criticisms of marketing? It's costly, right? It costs I have to pay this marketing person. You know, I, I thought if I build it, they will come. Uh, prices could be lower, and it creates want among customers for products and services that aren't really needed. Now, have you ever bought something that you don't truly need? Yeah, of course, we all have, right? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm notorious for buying things off of uh, uh, off of the. Um, uh, home shopping network or infomercials, right? I bought uh, a Susan Lucci Malibu Pilates, right? I bought a, a big top cupcake where you can make uh, cupcakes inside of cupcakes. So you have this really big, large cupcake and a medium cupcake and a small and an extra small, right? Why did I buy those things? Because it looked like a great idea at the time. Uh, did I really need it? Probably not. Uh, so that that's sometimes how why they you know may criti criti uh, criticize marketing and those those effects. Um, so on the key takeaways, by facilitating uh, transactions, marketing delivers value to both the consumers and the firm. So if I'm the, the firm, I'm selling the product or service, I'm making money, I get value. If you're the consumer and you need the product and you need to utilize it for something, you're receiving value. Uh, at the broader level, this process creates jobs and improves the quality of life in society, right? So it creates jobs for individuals who want to work in my company uh, and you still receive the value that you need. Marketing can be costly, so firms need to hire good people to manage their marketing activities, which is always the case. Uh, being responsible for both uh, making money for your company and delivering satisfaction to your customers makes marketing a great career, right? And it is a balancing act. Uh, you can't just be 
trying to make the profit. Uh, you, you need to, as I always tell people, if you want to be successful, you want to create some pro product or, or service, right? Find out what problem people have. If somebody has a problem and this is something that, you know, roadblock that they run into, if you solve their problem, then you'll definitely make money. So learning objective for the, I believe this is the last section, uh, understand and outline the elements of a marketing plan as a planning process. Uh, so marketing's role in the organization. So marketing is a functional area in companies just like operations and accounting. Uh, marketing activities do not occur separately uh, from the rest of the company, although you may have a marketing department, but marketing is all around. Marketing has to do with you, you know, the product design, it has to do with sales, it has to do with promotion. It touches uh, every, you know, not every, but mostly all, you know, portions of the company. Uh, so in terms of the marketing plan, so the strategy for implementing the components of marketing, creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging value. Remember that it's replacing, uh, you know, price, product, place, and promotion, right? So you want to create, communicate, deliver, and exchange. Uh, marketing strategists uh, use the corporate strategy and mission and combine uh, that with the understanding of the market to develop the company's marketing plan. So in order for me to have a successful marketing plan, I need to know what the company's strategy is, what their mission and their vision is, and then I work off of that. Once I know what your mission and vision is, then I can create my marketing plan and set that accordingly. Uh, so I want you to kind of review this on your own, uh, you know, maybe pause the video and check it out. Uh, but it's talk about talks about the steps in creating a marketing plan. So obviously it starts with the consumers. You have current consumers, right? So those are people already buying your product. You want to get the feedback because you want to make it better. And you have potential customers and you're making your product better. So those potential customers end up becoming uh, current customers. Right. You have your survey environment. Who are you surveying? You're surveying your current customers. Uh, then you want to evaluate your, your company. You have your mission statement, your strategy uh, and your organization statements. Right. So everything needs to be in alignment with that. Uh, and that needs to be in alignment with what who your consumers are. Uh, you have operations and your supply chain uh, manage uh, for profitability. Right. So some of you do just in time uh, inventory. Some of them say we have these stock for a specific reason, but you, you want to have your supply chain. I don't want to order five thousand tables and I'm only selling a hundred a week. Uh, offerings to fulfill customer needs. First and foremost, you need to fulfill their needs. You have a two-way interaction, and that's the feedback, the back and forth. Hey, it would be great if you did this. Now, I could say something outrageous. Hey, it would be great if you give me $10 million with the Big Mac that I just ordered. Now, that's just you know outrageous. Uh, but if it's something like, hey, I, I would like my Big Mac with uh, you know um, relish inside of it, and everybody in the city likes relish, Maybe that's something you should change to do. Not that that's a good idea. All right. And then you have your marketing research. And we talked about that as being one of the you know positions where people do the actual research. You go do the surveys. You send out the survey monkey, collect the data and see what the data is telling us. And that's, you know, in some of the you know upcoming slides is going to talk about being analytical because now we're in that analytical time where we're taking the data and we're figuring out what do we need to do with this data in order to market our product and or our service uh, to the best of our ability. Changes in the marketing environment, the way we do business is being conducted today is changing and marketing is changing along with it. And it has to. Right. There are several themes or important trends that you will notice throughout this book. And these are great and they should be the themes throughout the book. Ethics and social responsibility you need to do what's right. Uh, people, you know, back in the day, they weren't really looking at white collar crimes at all. But now they're you know, keeping a close eye on it uh, because, you know, obviously a lot of those people were, uh, you know, putting the shade over people's eyes. And, uh, and stealing a lot of people's money. Sustainability, we want to, you know, do what's right for the environment. So I say, you know, like uh, joke around, uh, you know, I have an electric car, so I'm doing my part for the environment. I'm not, not spreading out any emissions and killing the ozone layer. Uh, also leaving some energy out there for everybody else because I have solar panels. So companies need to do certain things that are sustainable, right? How much of your, you know, the products that you put back out are, are created from recyclable goods. Uh, service dominant logic, right? So you want to, you know, service. Like you go to In and Out, you get great service. You can tell the difference between, you know, going to In and Out and McDonald's, right? And you may have some great service from somebody at McDonald's, not to say that, but you know, you go to In and Out. If somebody's not giving you great service, then they're probably not going to be there that long. Uh, like I talked about the metrics, everything's metrics, metrics, metrics. Measure these numbers and tell what do the numbers tell us? Uh, you know, at my day job, same thing. Uh, so what do the numbers tell us? And it's a global environment uh, because we have the Internet. It could be somebody in our classroom, you know, from another country. It could be somebody, you know, from, you know, from another state. You, you just, you know, never know because the global environment has become the environment's come a lot smaller because of the Internet and because of a computer. So key takeaways. Um, 
The company's marketing plan flows from a strategic plan. Both begin with the fo focus on customers. Uh, the essential components, uh, remember that focus on customers is key. Solve their problems and you'll make it. The essential components of the plan are understanding customers, creating an offering that delivers value, communicating the value to the customers, exchanging with the customer, and evaluating the firm's performance. A uh, marketing plan is influenced by environmental trends such as social responsibility, right? Let's, you know, do what's, you know, socially responsible, uh, be sustainable, right? Let's do what's right for the environment, service dominant logic, like, you know, let's do things to create a good service environment for everyone. Uh, different companies like, uh, you know, Zappos that do great jobs in customer service and increased availability of data and effective metrics and the global nature of uh, the business environment. And it's definitely and it will continue to be even more global. Uh, so that's it for chapter one. Uh, not not too long, not too bad. I will tell you that chapter two uh, is a is a is a little bit longer uh, lecture, but that was only you know thirty five slides in in twenty five minutes and good to go. Uh, so uh, just make sure you, you follow instructions in your announcements on what you need to do uh, for week one, and, and that'll be it. So as always, I want you guys to uh, have a good day and a great week.